The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. In this demonstration, we're going to look at multiple beam interference. We'll use a plane parallel cavity at the beginning, and then we'll go on to a cavity using spherical mirrors. The setup is here. We have a laser, helium-neon laser, and here's the output from the laser. Then we reflect the beam from the laser into an optical isolator. It's made up of a polarizer and a quarter wave plate. And, and the output from the isolator is over here, is then reflected by this mirror into the uh, plane mirror cavity. So now, if we take a close, close look at the, the cavity, you can see that it's made up of two plane mirrors. Here's one of them, and here's the other. The spacing between them is only about three and a half millimeters or so, and one of the mirrors is attached to a piezoelectric crystal over here so that we can change the length of the cavity by simply applying a voltage to the piezoelectric crystal. The mounts, as you see, the mounts are pretty hefty to make sure that the cavity is stable, and adjustments can be made uh, to the cavity by, by using the knobs over here. The output of the cavity as you can see, will be then displayed on the screen over there. Now, if we bring in the screen as, a, as an insert, we can see that we have many, uh, many dots. And each dot represents a reflection by the pair of mirrors. And you can see as I misalign the mirrors, I can separate out the individual spots. As I come in close to alignment, I can, uh, in fact, now, now let me go the other side, show that I can spread the dot the other way. And then if I change the vertical alignment, I can move them all over the place. Now I'm ready to bring them all in so that they can interfere with each other. When they're separated, of course, they can interfere with each other. Now they're merging together, and then very soon we'll see, we'll see them interfering. You can see already they're interfering. And now it's dark. Now I can press on the mirror here. You'll see that I can change the intensity from bright to dark. And in order to see it a little bit more clearly on the control condition, I'm going to turn on a sweep voltage to the piezoelectric crystal. So maybe I can tweak the alignment a little bit better. Now you can see it going between dark and, and bright very nicely when the beams interfere. Now let me separate out the beams, the interference stops, and then as I bring them back in, when I have pretty close to perfect alignment, you can see how they all interfere together and the intensity goes from bright to almost dark. Now, in the, in the next part of the demonstration, I'm going to put a detector on the output and, uh, and see what we see with the detector. I have now added the detector so that we can look at the output of the cavity both on the detector as well as directly on the screen. So here is where I put the detector. The output of the beam is reflected by the beam splitter here onto the detector and the output of the detector then goes onto the, into an oscilloscope. Also, the, since this is a beam splitter, 
the, uh, the direct output of the cavity uh, can still be uh, monitored on the screen. Now let's look at the screen of the oscilloscope. As you can see, we, we have two resonances, but let's forget about one of them. Let's just concentrate on, on one. What this represents is the intensity transmitted through the cavity as a function of path length difference. And the path length difference is being scanned by the piezoelectric crystal I mentioned before. You can see if I block the light, if I block the light, then that's where the zero is. And when the uh, light is unblocked, you can see that the, I get a peak intensity due to the interference of the multiple beams and then to very little intensity due to, again, destructive interference of the two of the many of the multiple beams. Now let me bring in the, the other resonance. And the other resonance is due to the fact that every time the uh, cavity is changed by, the cavity length is changed by a half wavelength of light, then we see another, another resonance. The spacing between the two resonances is given by the velocity of light C divided by twice the length of the cavity, or C over 2L. Another interesting thing that you want to observe is the quality factor, so-called the finesse of the, of the cavity. And the finesse of the cavity is, de is defined as the free spectral range, which is the separation between these two resonances, divided by the width of of the resonance. In this case, the finesse is about 30, or sometimes I can adjust it to about 50 or so, because my mirrors have 95% reflectivity. So the, uh, what I'd like to do now is show what happens as I misalign the, the cavity. As you can see, every time I just touch, I just have to touch the cavity, and the resonances move. Now you can see now, as I start misaligning, just by turning the knob just slightly, you can see that the finesse goes way down because of the misalignment. Now as I try to peek it, and I hope I can do it on camera, and here we are. I can almost bring it back where I was before. And you can see if I just tap, if I just tap on it, I can move the resonances all over the place. Now let's look at the, the spot on the, on the screen at the same time as we look at the output of the detector on the oscilloscope. So the spot on the screen then is going to appear in the insert. And, uh, and you can see that if I misalign, let me do the misalignment again, you can see that you can also notice it on the on the screen also that the spot is, is misaligned. Let me see if I can get it again. Here we are. Now I'm going to take the automatic scanning out, and instead I'll do the scanning by hand. So let's look at, at the spot now. You can see I can uh, vary the intensity from bright and dark by just simply leaning on the mirror to change the length by very little bit. Then if we can now look at the oscilloscope output, we can see that, that when, when the spot is, is, is pretty dark, there's not much output, and then as I play with the cavity here, I can make the output of the detector go big and then to, uh, to nothing. Now, so far, we only looked at the light transmitted through the cavity as a result of multiple beam interference. We did not look at all at the light reflected back from the cavity as a result of multiple beam interference. I need to modify the setup just a little bit so that we can observe the light reflected back from the cavity. And when we do that, we'll see that we can learn a lot from it. 
Now the setup has been modified so that we can observe the light reflected from the interferometer. Here's the modification. All we've done is added a beam splitter over here so that the light reflected from the interferometer will be sampled. Here it is. And then we pass it onto this mirror over here, reflect it onto this beam splitter here, and then into detector number two. Since this is a beam splitter, we can also observe the reflected light onto the screen by, here it is, left-hand spot. The spot on the right is, a, is our ref, transmitted beam. Uh, as you can see, if I misalign the cavity, you can see that both of them will, will misalign. All right. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the scan off and do the scanning by hand. Now, if you watch both spots, you'll see that the one on the right, as we've seen before, flashes, which means the intensity goes very high and then very low. But the spot on the left doesn't seem to do anything. Question is, is there anything happening with the spot on the left when the transmitted beam is going through high peaks and, and low valleys. In order to do this, we should look at the oscilloscope, which is the output, which represents the output of the two detectors. Now, let me put the scan back on again, and let's look at the oscilloscope. The lower trace is the transmitted light, as we've seen before. The zero is here, and the peak transmission is over here. The upper trace is the one associated with the light reflected from the cavity. The zero, if I block the reflected beam into the detector, that you can see that the zero is, is over here, which is in line with that little marker. Let's do it again. Here's the zero. And when we have no light transmitted. There's a lot of light reflected. When we have a lot of light transmitted, which is the peak of the transmission resonance, we have certainly less light being reflected, but not quite zero. Remember, zero is over here. And the reason why we don't dip all the way to zero is because the interference is not complete, and maybe you want to think about that. Now let's see what happens when I misalign the cavity. Let's look on the screen again. The upper trace, as we say, is the reflected beam, and the lower trace is transmitted beam. Now as I misalign, first you see that, that the length of the cavity changes. All we need is a lambda by 2. And, and we get a change. But then, as I misalign some more, you can see that the finesse uh, drops, or the width of the resonance grows. And then as I realign, indeed, both of them are affected essentially in the same, in the same way. So when we have peak transmission in the transmitted light, the, the reflected light goes through, goes through a minimum. Ideally, it would go through zero. But we don't have an ideal setup. In the next part of the demonstration, we're going to show what happens when the beam going into the cavity is not a collimated beam. In this setup so far, the beam going into the cavity was reasonably collimated. So what we'll do, we'll put a lens and we will then generate an expanding beam that enters the cavity. So let's see what happens when we have such a beam going into the cavity. 